Come on, your carriage awaits. I don't accept lifts from strangers. <laughs> strangers? I live next door. And damn strange you are too. <laughs> what do you need that thing for when you're on your own? They said, Nora Batty is a different woman in a sidecar, so I thought, a different Nora Batty? It's worth a try. <laughs> Who said? So I thought, go for it, Elvin. Sweeten up the old bat. <laughs> Take her for a spin now and then. Bring a bit of colour to her life. Have you any idea how close you are to being spoken of in the past tense? <laughs> I, it. I realise I make your senses spin. Like a touch of gastric flu. <laughs> I know you're terrified of being alone with me, in case you lose control. But I'll be on the bike, you'll be in the sidecar. It's like having separate rooms. You're never getting me in that thing. It's all right. I'm flexible. I'll be in the sidecar. You'll be on the bike. <laughs> now what? Look who's coming. <laughs> what was all that about? Audrey Craig. To think we used to be best friends. What happened? Never you mind what happened. You could do with a best friend to sweeten you up a bit. I'm sweet enough, thank you. Yeah, but only on me, and I warned you, I'm dedicated to remaining single and happy. Psychological problem. There's a medical name for it. I believe it's called Pearl. That's the one I'm thinking of. There's no cure. <laughs> what happened to the wings of fuselage? I bet it still won't fly even when they come. Oh, no, don't, be, don't be rotten. It's obvious. It's a coffee grinder. <laughs> Enough of the levity. It's a public service. I'm trying to civilise Nora Batty. Couldn't you start with something easier, like uh, climbing Everest? You can't move for people climbing Everest. Oh, but it's never been done in one of those. You'll enjoy freewheeling down, Alvin. <laughs> uh, no, no, don't give him ideas. He's inclined to be a bit, uh, you know, balmy. I was hoping to take Nora Batty for a spin. You see what I mean? <laughs> Oh, could one ask why? Well, she deserves a treat now and then. And I don't like to think of her only as pining for me from a distance. Alvin, I think you're only inches away from being one of the bravest, most brainless people I've ever known. It's very touching to hear you say so. Now, what's all this between Nora and an Audrey Craig? Nora Batty and Audrey Craig? It's like a traffic warden to a motorist. It's been like it for years. They used to be the best of friends. Then something happened at a wedding. <laughs> something happened at mine. I got the missus. Oh, <laughs> till death do you part. What happened at the wedding? I don't know. I don't think they remember themselves. I think now they just enjoy being miserable with each other. There's a lot of talent at that round here. <laughs> Audrey Craig? Yeah, she used to be a brook. 
Oh, I remember Audrey Brook. She once lent me her pencil sharpener. I never asked for it. She came up to me in class one day and said, Norman, would you like to borrow my pencil sharpener? <laughs> it made me very uneasy. I went around for weeks afterwards hoping that she'd never catch up with me alone somewhere with a blunt pencil. <laughs> How do we find out what happened at this wedding? I'm still a bit easy what happened at mine. <laughs> I feel no. She was at the wedding. That's a thinker's expression. Plato, Aristotle, my Barry. <laughs> do you think life has any point? You haven't eaten your egg. Even if people eat their eggs. It's cold now. What was wrong with your egg? I was going to eat it. I was poised with a spoon and then I thought, why am I doing this? If life is slipping me by, why am I just sitting here eating a boiled egg? Would you prefer scrambled? <laughs> I am scrambled. Alexander the Great had conquered the known world by the time he was 30. I bet he always had a good breakfast. <laughs> Imagine. The whole world yours and still only 30. What would you do with it all? There's only so much you can send to a car boot sale. <laughs> do with it? I'd... I'd bring justice to the toiling masses. Do you see a mass of toiling these days? <laughs> I'd build a little palace with its own golf course. <laughs> It, isn't it? You're still pining for golf. We'll go and have a game. I don't. I keep making a wrong impression on the captain. I am not having you sitting here wasting eggs. You're going to play golf, Barry. <laughs> Do you believe in the afterlife? Is this a trick question? <laughs> no, I'm serious. Not like you. Usually thinking what's for lunch. I know what's for lunch. What I'm not sure about is afterlife. Well, do you believe in it? I'm asking you. Well, perhaps I might believe in it if I thought you did. <laughs> you can't believe in the afterlife just because your mate does. Well, we usually do most things together. <laughs> Did that look illegal to you? It looked dangerous. Hmm. As long as it's not illegal. <laughs> what happened? It's him. He can't steer his bike. We were going too fast. I'll get it right next time. Well, what was he doing with his bike? Not very well. <laughs> I was overloaded. Hmm. Now he tells us. And here's me without a breathalyzer. <laughs> Not only a bike, a sidecar. What's he need that for? He's trying to coax Nora Batty into it. Oh, she'll never go for it. You're not making allowances for my personal magnetism. I, I'm not making allowances for your personal magnetism. At the moment, I'm in neutral. I'm sure that's a relief to us all. <laughs> and uh, what does Nora Batty think about your personal magnetism? She pretends to be immune. Oh dear, oh dear. She was immune to Wally's, and he was her husband. Ah, but he didn't have my charisma. He had pigeons. And a scale model of HMS Rodney. No wonder she married him. <laughs> Happened at that other wedding. What other wedding? The one where Nora fell out with Audrey Craig. Oh, that wedding. I hear they used to be best friends. Oh, ever since school. They used to share the same interests. Misery. <laughs> no, they didn't. They were all right. Nora's all right underneath. That's not the bit that shows, though, is it? <laughs> so something went wrong at that wedding. Oh, very shortly afterwards, it was out like mine. Oh. I have to admit, we were reasonably happy for the first few hours. <laughs> you enjoyed the cake. You were all luckier than you deserved. What happened at the wedding? Audrey laughed at Nora's hat. <laughs>
<laughs> Everybody laughs at Nora's hand. But not usually in front of the vicar and 40 guests. And then somebody told Audrey what Nora was saying about her. And they've not spoken since. worried lass. Now I always think spending was invented for such occasions. <laughs> it's Barry. He's pining for golf. Was well, that a problem? Why doesn't he play golf? He may have lost his nerve, which they do if they don't keep updating their equipment. <laughs> he has. He's lost his nerve. He keeps upsetting the captain and he daren't play now. Ooh. Has he tried the more dangerous sporting activities? We have a large selection of clothing suitable to have bad accidents in. <laughs> His heart's in golf. I won't have him doing anything dangerous. I'm looking for something that would restore his golfing confidence. And there it is! Larger than life! What a wonderful coincidence! For what? Sometimes there occurs the perfect matching between the need and the man. What's he ever been a perfect match for? Yeah, I was wondering about that. Restoring <laughs> golfing confidence. Your Barry needs a caddy. I'm not a caddy. Well, you can carry a golf bag. And if that doesn't restore his confidence, I don't know what will. <laughs> That's wonderful. That should do it. That should be all he needs. Ow. I wouldn't say all. <laughs> <laughs> if he really wants his confidence back, he wants these. He's got golfing shoes. Ah, but these belong to a famous comedian. He used to love his golf. He called them his lucky shoes. What happened to him? Got killed by a bus. <laughs> what can you get? I mean, what we have basically is two ladies who haven't spoken for years. That's a novelty. I'll be two ladies and they never stop speaking for years. The question is, why haven't they spoken? Because each is waiting for the other to apologise. Give them time, it's only been 30 years. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to take some mending after 30 years. Women are stubborn. I think they had lessons in it at school whilst we were doing woodwork. I did needlework. No. <laughs> I expect that's where they picked up their personal magnetism. I did it a butch way, without a thimble. The Nora Audrey situation is fundamentally a domestic dispute. I used to handle six of these a week. The only one I couldn't handle was my own. <laughs> How do you propose handling this one? In the best traditions of the force, a bit of low cunning. <laughs> yeah, it's getting very difficult sneaking out with a bicycle. Why well, ever seem to know the minute you reach for a bicycle? Have you told her it's all perfectly harmless? Although, please don't think I'm laying down conditions. <laughs> it's uncanny when you've removed every squeak from the bicycle. Howard, you don't think she's psychic? Close. It's like living with Gypsy Rose Lee. Wasn't she a stripper? You know, I guess it's not, then. <laughs> We think up some device to get them together. And then what? Who's going to apologise first? Yeah. I can't see Nora Batty apologising first. I can't see Audrey Craig either. <laughs> the drinks are on you, Howard. <laughs> it's got so I'm too nervous to go to golf. I've got golfer's block. You won't be alone, Barry. Tom's going with you. Tom? Not only that, but... But what? You're going to have a caddy. Nobody has a caddy. They do. Every time I see them on television, they've got a caddy. Those are professionals. Oh, there's one law for them and one for you, is there? 
Well, if you want a caddy, Barry, you have a caddy. I don't want a caddy. Well, you've got one. You can go back to that golf course in style. Who do you know that's a caddy? It's Smiler. That's enough for two caddies. Can he play golf? Why does he have to play golf? He's only carrying your bag. And that's not all. I've bought you these, and I want you to wear them. They belong to a famous comedian. They were his lucky shoes. Oh, Glenda. Oh, that's really nice. That's really sweet. That's really... different. <laughs> so, basically what we've got here is that neither lady will apologise first. They're both highly qualified at not apologising first. Clash of the Titans. <laughs> Speaking of Titans, who's getting the next round? Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to transport. And I'm deaf. I'll do it. I can't bear to see you lot suffer. Same again, landlord. Now, we know Nora is a tough nut. Well, she's probably met her match in Audrey Craig. I know Audrey Craig. So, if neither one of them will apologise first, what we've got to do is make sure that both of them think that the other one is going to apologise first. It'll go wrong. Why should it go wrong? You haven't heard the plan yet. It'll go wrong. I bet Robin Hood had one like thee amongst his merry men. <laughs> Come on, what's the plan then? We arrange a meeting for them somewhere. Somewhere quiet. Finding somewhere quiet's not as easy as people think. <laughs> How are you going to get them somewhere quiet? Well, you tell Nora that Audrey Craig wants to meet her there so she can apologise. Marina can tell Audrey Craig that Nora wants to meet her there so she can apologise. OK, let's suppose we get them there. They're each waiting for the other to apologise and there's this silence. Then what? Yeah, well, that's the tricky bit. I'm working on it. It'll go wrong. <laughs> I thought this was supposed to be my car. It is your car. Well, when am I going to get to drive it, then? As soon as I feel you're ready. You've got to stop rushing into things. I warned you about tearing through life at top speed. I'll give you on a toot. Uh. Where is it? Then you wonder why I won't let you drive. It's that thing in the middle of the wheel. You ready for the old 18 holes, then? No! Yes, he is. <laughs> Here's your caddy. You might as well get used to the weight. Oh. <laughs> He'll get a lot better once he's got his balance. Has he caddied before? For me? I wouldn't be without him. <laughs> be careful, Barry. You mean it could get worse? <laughs> So where are we going to get them to meet? Well, where they won't feel embarrassed. Somewhere where they can't be overheard. You can hear Nora Batty three streets away. <laughs> I'd have said four. Try five. <laughs> oh, they won't be shouting on this occasion. They'll be wary and suspicious. The old sports field. There are a couple of old sports. Let them meet on the old sports field. Let them meet in the middle of the field. Nobody's going to overhear then. I like it. That's good, Alvin. What time? Midnight, then they can use the broomsticks. <laughs> Three o'clock, people. Good enough. Right, off you go, Marina. Tell Audrey Craig that Nora wants to meet her at three o'clock so she can apologise. Uh, perhaps I ought to go with the young lady in case she forgets the message. Stay here. <laughs> We've got other plans for thee. Well, I'll be off then. Alone and unescorted. <laughs> Be careful, whoever you are. That's kind of you, stranger. <laughs> she seems very pleasant. <laughs> See what's wrong.
wrong with it? Me? Well, it's your car. <laughs> don't worry on my account. I don't dislike being broken down. Saved by the bell. How come they ran out of trousers before they got to your ankle? <laughs> Will you give us a dog to golf course? Sorry, I've got to get dressed for the procession. Something to do with Chinese custom. Well, that's it then. No golf. What a pity. How long are you going to be getting dressed for this procession? Not long. Will you be coming back this way? Yes. Right. We'll wait here. You go and get dressed for the procession and then you can give us a tow to the golf course. Oh, goody. <laughs> Just one condition. Promise me strict silence. No one must know I mix with people in trousers like those. <laughs> What do you want? No, not what do you want. Try. Hello, Alvin. What do you want? <laughs> I've got big news for you. And I've got big news for you if you don't stop ringing this doorbell. You're looking at the peacemaker. I'm here to mend an old quarrel. This isn't an old quarrel. I've only just started. <laughs> you and me. You and Audrey Craig. Don't you mention that name here. Hang about a bit. Hold your horses. What would you say if I told you she was ready to apologise? I'd say it's about time. <laughs> That's the spirit. Meet her halfway. <laughs> How come she's told you she wants to apologise? Never mind about that. Just listen for a minute. She wants to meet you at the old sports field at three o'clock. <laughs> what a performance. She always was a bit dramatic. Well, are you going or aren't you? I'm going. I've waited a long time for this apology. I mean, what an impression. Being told to the golf club. It's going to do wonders for my image. He's only dropping us off. We'll leave the car in the golf club car park and whilst we're having a game, the mechanic can come out and have a look at it. Oh, it's not what you call a great entrance, though, is it? Look at the impression you're going to make when they see how serious you are about your golf. You'd rather be told there than miss it. That'll earn you a few extra points. How much is the mechanic going to cost? I shall pair him to the bone for you. Mm. Couldn't he just drop us near the golf club? No. And don't forget the impression you're going to make with your caddy. <laughs> Does he even know which clubs are which? Nobody said anything about knowing which club was which. <laughs> People who lift Dragon's Tail will find convenient Toba. <laughs> Now, pay attention, Clegg. Here's the plan. Alvin will lead Nora to the right-hand side of the field. Marina will lead Audrey Craig to the left-hand side. Yes, that's all clear so far, but then what? On the dot of three o'clock, they start walking towards each other, and they meet in the centre of the field. Yeah, I can understand that bit too, but, I mean, <laughs> what happens next? They'll both be standing there waiting for each other to speak. Ah. Uh -huh. That's when we do our bit, with the organisational flair for which Truly of the Yard has long been famous. <laughs> do I hear a round of applause? It's your round next. <laughs> What's he doing here without a ticket? <laughs> I thought he was with you. Are you asleep? I'm not asleep. I'm like a coiled spring, ready for any emergency. Well, that's good. Because there's one coming. <laughs> Did you see that? Of course I saw it. I'm a trained observer. <laughs> what do you reckon it was? It was a dragon. Fair enough. As long as it wasn't an emergency. to change my hay fever medication. I 
I can't do it. I can't play in these shoes. <laughs> They're a present from Glenda. I can. I've got to play in these shoes. Oh, look at them. I hate them. They're, they're too, too bright. They're terrific. They belong to a famous comedian. They were his lucky shoes. Why is there a switch on them shoes? What do you mean a switch on? Well, it looks like a switch. What's a switch going to be doing on a pair of shoes? It does. It looks like a switch. for an apology. Whose Who's idea, idea was that? that? <laughs> Who do you think? Oh, what a <laughs> lovely thought! <laughs> You can never really be forgiven for insulting a hat. <laughs> People used to laugh at me when I was a bobby, but I found if you smiled and were forgiving, you could usually get the beggars later. <laughs> Sometimes they laugh at me for wearing such a big feather. <laughs> <laughs>